the pages of history are absolutely full to the brim of insane people in positions of power. Ask any American, for example, what they think of the opposing political party's leader, and they will string off a list of insults that wouldn't look out of place at a Comedy Central roast. But in comparison to the subject of today's video, Trump and Biden look like two respectable, put together, downright sensible men. Caligula might possibly be one of the most insane men who has ever stumbled his way into power. But who was he? And how insane do you have to be to earn such a title? Caligula was born in Antium, Italy on the 31st of August 12th AD. His birth name was Gaius Caesar, but he became known as Caligula, which means little boot. He was the son of the Roman general Germanicus and spent his early years following his father on campaign in Germania. But sadly, his father died when Caligula was only seven years old. And along with his mother and five siblings, he returned to Rome. Now, at this point in the story, you may understandably feel some sympathy for poor little Caligula, but he had an ace up his sleeve. His biological uncle and soon-to-be adoptive father was a man called Tiberius, who happened to be the somewhat important emperor of Rome. But it wasn't all caviar and champagne because Tiberius and Caligula's mother didn't exactly get along with each other. In fact, there was a tad bit of drama between the two, which kind of led to Caligula being the sole male survivor of his family. In 26 AD, Caligula followed Tiberius to the island of Capri and spent the next six years shadowing the emperor until 37 AD when Tiberius died. And Caligula, at the young age of 24, became the emperor of well, a whole bloody empire. Caligula, by most accounts, was a skilled orator and held natural talents for diplomacy, which he probably inherited from his father, who had been a superb diplomat. But it soon became apparent in his early reign that he had an unhelpful habit of speaking his mind, something that is often described as having little value in politics. Despite his flaws, the first seven months of Caligula's rule were described by the philosopher Philo and a golden age of happiness and prosperity. But as you can probably tell from the title of this video, this wasn't going to last for too long. Things took a turn when in late 37 AD, Caligula became gravely ill and was hovering between life and death for some time. When his health was restored, he embarked on a purge of suspected opponents. The first on his list was Tiberius's grandson Gemellus, who Caligula accused to wanting to poison him, he was forced to kill himself. Tiberius's political associate Solanus was charged with supporting Gemellus and was swiftly executed. It is safe to say that Caligula was pissed and he went on a bit of a rampage and continued down this path for the rest of his life. Now that we have a bit of an overview of Caligula, let's take a look at some of the craziest things that he is accused of doing. It is important to note that some of what I'm about to tell you cannot be proven, and some of it may be downright lies propagated by historians with a grudge for the poor fella. But it is entertaining, no matter how many grains of salt you take it with. Caligula apparently had a great fondness for his horse in Catatus, so much so that he built an entire house for his horse to live in complete with multiple rooms, furniture, and a crew of slaves who were ordered to follow the horse's every command. Now, I don't know about you, but Caligula and I are firm believers that a horse should never dine alone, which is why I find it completely understandable that Caligula often ordered for his horse to be brought to his dining table so that they may share a meal and some wine together. If you thought dining with your horse was a bit strange, how about considering yourself to be an actual god? and then forcing people to worship you as if you actually are one. Just enough Tuesday for our boy Caligula. It is reported that he had temples constructed where people could go to worship him, which were of course equipped with life-size golden statues of him. His obsession apparently nearly caused a revolt in Jerusalem when he decided that the Jews were not worshiping him enough and ordered Petronius, the governor of Syria, to build a massive statue of him in a temple in Jerusalem. The Jews, of course, threatened to revolt, and they probably would have if Petronius hadn't talked Caligula out of the idea. Obviously, Caligula then had Petronius's head chopped off for daring to disagree with him. If we are now to consider Caligula a god, then it only makes sense that he should declare war on another god. In Caligula's case, he decided that Neptune, the god of the sea, was a worthy opponent. Legend has it that he once ordered his men to stab the English Channel, TBH. I think this may be one of the cases where history gets a bit exaggerated over time, but it is fun to imagine thousands of angry Romans slashing at the waves. 
Another fun-filled story from Caligula's rule was the time he was speaking to a political enemy of the former Emperor Tiberius. He asked the man what he had spent his time in exile doing, to which the man replied, I constantly prayed to the gods for what has come to pass, that Tiberius might die and you become emperor. That sounds like a very flattering compliment, but of course Caligula took it the complete wrong way, and in his insane mind, left the conversation thinking that everyone he had exiled was probably praying for his death, so he sent out an order for every person he had ever exiled to be tracked down and executed. Very, very reasonable if you ask me. The final act of insanity that I will share with you today is another example of Caligula having beef with a god. The philosopher Seneca claimed that Caligula often found himself in heated exchanges with the god Jupiter, but one time, things got a tad out of hand between the two gods. Caligula was reportedly enjoying a ballet when thunder started in the distance. Caligula got instantly furious with Jupiter and stormed outside yelling. Jupiter must have said something rather nasty to Caligula, as he apparently threatened to beat the god to death. It may come as no surprise to you that in 41 AD, someone finally had the sense to assassinate Caligula and put an end to his rule of insanity. There's always something that we can learn from history, and I think that the lesson today is that, no matter how bad your politicians may be, at least they don't actually consider themselves to be gods and then proceed to try and fight with actual gods. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more interesting tales from history.